Party Central, right? <laughs> now we just got some uh, buyer's remorse, maybe? Uh, Average American, how much weight do they put on between Thanksgiving and Christmas? Who has an idea? Ten. Ten. Ooh, ten! <laughs> Three to five on average. Take that times five years. So math was never a strong suit. I was in the science, but five times five, three to five, 15 to 20 pounds, right? Over a five year period. So that can be, and that acts like 60 pounds. Each pound is three pounds on your back and on your knees. So you wonder why your back's hurting, why your knees are hurting. Take off five pounds, it's like taking 15. So tonight is not just about weight loss. Between me and you, I don't care how much weight you lose over the next 21 days. I want you to be healthy at the end of the day. Some of you, God made us to be 150 pounds. Some of us made you, to, he, he made you to be 115, 170. Whatever that is, you have to find where your real house is. We gotta be healthy doing it. And that's what tonight's takeaway is. There's a couple reasons why I do nutrition. I've been in practice going on, it's a crazy thing, but on my 14th year in practice already. I've, nutrition's always been a principle of mine because I grew up in an unhealthy setting. I grew up around Twinkies, around uh, Little Debbie bars. <laughs> I used to have French fries and hamburgers for dinner. It was just a lifestyle I grew up in. I suffered miserably as a kid. I was sick as a dog. I had migraine headaches to no end. Couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out. Went to college, was going to be a physical therapist, and just something clicked. It's like, wait, there's something's going on here. What is it? At that point, I was on a French fry and Thousand Island dressing Ooh, in school. <laughs> that was my diet. And then, so I started. And then something clicked. Said, hey, you know what? There's something to this. So I cleaned up my nutrition. I also had a major problem within my neck, and that got corrected as well. I haven't had a migraine headaches since I've gone through all that. I get tension headaches every, every now and again from stress. And, not, um, sometimes I'll skip meals throughout the day. But when we get these warning signs, if you're getting these warning signs, there's a reason, right? They're not just coming out of the blue and they're just like, hey, you know, today I'm gonna give you a headache. Today, I'm gonna give you acid reflux. There's something you're doing within your lifestyle that is causing this warning sign that you're getting. The first thing, take away from tonight, take personal accountability for exactly where you're at right now. It's okay. The season you might be in might be the season where you know what, times are going good, I'm rocking it, I can just kind of take care of myself and just kind of uh, uh, maintain what I've been doing. That's the season you're in and that's okay. You might be in the season where you've been sick and suffering and people around you are sick and suffering and you're looking for outside answers. That's okay, it's the season you're in. The best part about seasons is that they pass. They, all, they come and they go. But if you start to pile up a bunch of bad ones in a row, what happens? We get healthier sick. Right? By the, and we can talk about various diseases tonight. We can talk about cancer. How you can have cancer for nine years before it shows up on a mirror bed. You can have heart disease. Four out of ten cases of heart, of heart disease, the first sign is a heart attack itself. Type 2 diabetes. You can have that for years before you actually get diagnosed with it. Hypertension. I just had a patient earlier today was telling me, I don't know if they're even here today, one of their, was a family member or friend, was fine, was a, they died yesterday or the day before. Completely fine, was feeling great, so it was a family member. And what happened, they had a massive heart attack. Were they, were they sick just yesterday? No. How'd they feel, good? They felt good, they, everything was fine and dandy. My dad has the same story, walking in the park. Massive heart attack, almost died. He felt great, he was exercising. You can be sick and not know it. Do not base your health or your family's health on how you look or how you feel. That is not tonight's definition. Tonight's definition is how you function. Nutrition plays a major role in this. We can get you to function just a little bit better. Everybody has the potential to increase their health by 1%. Yes? So what's the other 99%? That's mindset. Get your mind right, make change, hold yourself accountable. The problem is this. It's not because you don't have resources. You can have stuff shipped to you in two days at Amazon. And you, know, you can have food, Amazon pantries now at Whole Foods. You can have, you have access to so much information. We have more gyms we've ever had before, more fitness centers. You go up and down 19. There's boot camps and places at every corner. There's these studio places with all these places to work out, all these places where you can be healthy. 
all these health clubs, are we healthy or sick as a nation? Does anybody believe that we are healthy as a nation? We're not. We are so sick, we're 37th out of 40th in all the industrialized countries in overall health. We're the second most obese country, we take the most amount of medications, our kids are sicker than they ever, ever have been before, and the reason behind it is partly because of some of the stuff we're putting in and on our bodies. And these types of things work. These fad diets, they work for a reason, because they, they get results. But what happens when you get off the diet? Phew, you'll yield it right back on. <laughs> these are lifestyle changes. Then you look behind you, oh, that, that pizza's sticking to me now. I just ate that. Metabolism slows as we get older. Your hormones slow as you get older. It's just part of part of it. So the number one takeaway is, what's the problem? Is One of it's commitment. So I have a patient, her name, um, so I, I talked to her at the, at the last workshop. Her name's Denise, and she's been with me for years, probably seven or eight years she's a patient. Came into workshops, came into workshops. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change. She'd be into it for about a month, back to the good old Denise. Into it for about a month, never change. Something clicked, in, uh, probably about a year ago, one of our workshops, she said, you know what, I'm done. I'm completely done. She's down probably about 75 or 80 pounds, got her life completely back on track, off a bunch of meds. And what was it? It wasn't commitment, or it wasn't the information, it was the commitment, it was the mindset. So those of you who have some repeat offenders that have been here before, right? So Barb's been here before, Marge, you've been to him, Linda, Terry, you know, and you guys have all been here before, and the reason why they come and they come back, because they take something away each and every time. Until you can teach it, you don't know it. So for those of you who need to make a couple changes tonight, I'm gonna to throw a bunch of info at you. If you're in crisis situation, and you're, you know like that diagnosis is right around the corner, and I need to get my butt in gear, or else I have something waiting for me in a couple months, that you need to make changes, and you make them yesterday. And for those of you that I'm talking to you, just know that you have a partner in this and a coach in this, but you need to make those changes right away. For those of you who do not, you're like, I'm kind of good, I just need a couple tweaks, take two or three things away from tonight and just do those things over the next 30 days. Okay. Now when it comes to weight loss, it comes from a couple different things. I have no silver bullet. I can't tell you that you can just do one or two things that's gonna put you where you need to be. It's 70% nutrition, it's 30% exercise. You don't wanna sabotage, sabotage your workout by doing things afterwards that are gonna be certain benefit of you getting better. So I do a 30, 60, 90 rule. What that means is that if you want to try to improve your health by 30%, take 30% of the things away from tonight, 60% or 90%, wherever you're at, it's a 30, 60, or 90 rule. And just try to do a little, little things a little bit better. There's no such thing as doing something 100% of the time, 100% correctly. It's like a unicorn. It doesn't exist. Right? So these changes that you can make, you can do them, but you have to stay consistent. you got to show up every day, you got to check the box. The first thing I want to talk about is when it comes to your internal environment. We have either an acidic environment or an alkaline environment. When you're acidic, that's when you're eating the fast food diet, you're eating a lot of processed foods, you're not exercising, you're stressed to the max. What happens when you're acidic? Well, unfortunately, that's where cancer lives. That's where heart disease lives. Diabetes. You name most pathologies and diseases, about 97 to 98% of these are acidic-based diseases. So we've got to get you alkaline. Now when you're acidic, what happens as well is that you, you produce yeast and fungus in your body, and it's very, very difficult to lose weight. You become very, very sick. You also, your body releases something called calcium carbonate. <coughs> Has anybody ever, ever heard of this before? From you. From me. So when you have calcium carbonate, when this gets released, anybody know where, where we find calcium at? In our bones. So it's getting leached from our bones, and then what happens as we get older, a lot of times, females more so than males, is that we have the bone density issues, osteopenia issues, because this calcium carbonate from living an acidic lifestyle is pulling that calcium out of your body. So I call it the urine test. Right? You go to the bathroom, okay, and you look in the toilet, you say, is that clear or is that yellow? If you're not on, on any supplements, if it looks like you just swallowed a highlighter, you're dehydrated, and I can pretty much tell you that you're gonna have an acidic base pH. 
On the flip side, if you're going to have that clear yarn where you can't really tell, you just have a little bit of a, of a hint of a yellow, that's going to be a good test to let you know that you might be more, you're, you're hydrated, but more likely you might be more on the alkaline stage of things. You can also do a pH test where we can get uh, your analysis done so you can see actually what your pH levels are in your body. For those of you who are analyticals like me, I want you to 7.2. It's a 7.2 is where I want your pH, just slightly above neutral. Now, alkaline. How can we increase your alkalinity in your body? These are things such as these green leafy veggies that were inside your smoothies. Uh, resistance exercise. Vitamin D and fish oil. This helps you decrease inflammation. When we have inflammatory processes in our body, from stress, from sugar, from not eating, from not getting adjusted, from all these things we're doing wrong, what these allow you to do, what start to change these things up allows you to start working on decreasing the inflammation. What happens when we become overly inflamed, there's hormones in our body, a bunch of them. One of the ones is cortisol. Okay? That's your hunger hormone. It's also your stress hormone. So now we're under a ton of stress, Who's had stress this week? Right, who, Terry, right? Terry, that's, <laughs> yes? We, we all get it, right? How we manage the stress is a different story. When we get hit with that stress, the car broke down, financial disharmony, whatever it is, is it the end of the world and it's ending today or are you managing the stress appropriately and you're giving it the amount of thought that it needs to be? Now, if you're on the former of that and you're focus on everything as if it is the end of the world and what happens is now we have cortisol levels that spike up when our cortisol levels are up we now produce an acidic environment <clears throat> when you're acidic you can try to eat and follow Richard Simmons Jenny Craig Nutrisystem all day long it's not gonna matter because your hormones are a mess you've got to get your cortisol levels under control a couple ways you can do it you can read the list sleep is first and foremost one you can't catch up on sleep it doesn't exist if you're sleeping four hours a night and then on weekends you're sleeping for 10, your body might feel a little more rested, but you're losing that sleep. Two rolls of thumb, don't go to sleep on the same day you wake up on, i.e. past midnight. You still got to get between seven to nine hours, more so closer to eight. Um, uh, more, I, I prefer to keep you right on that eight hour mark over this research showing it can be from seven to nine. When you work out too hard or too long, Talk about exercise. I'll talk about exercise here in just a little bit. When you work out too long, these 45 minute to an hour cardio workouts, okay, or time intensity interval training for 45 minutes to an hour, what happens? Cortisol levels go up, growth hormone and testosterone go down. You are now storing all your fat and you're burning your muscle. When you're doing cardio, it's high intensity interval training for about 20 to 25 minutes. That's where you should be. What that does. That's going to get your hormone levels now. Cortisol goes down, growth hormone and testosterone go up. I get it. This is going to be the first time you've heard some of this for some of you. Look at the science behind it. We can think about the Olympics. We've got the Winter Games coming up, but the Summer Olympics I always talk about because it's an easy connection for the uh, analogy. Sprinters, 100 meter dash, 200 meter dash, guys and girls, a lot of muscle tone, pretty fit. Marathon runners, not much muscle tone, although they're fit. Who looks healthier, my marathon runners or my spreaders? What are they doing? They're going shorter long distances. Short. Go short distances. I just saved you 30 minutes a day working out. You're welcome. I just gave you some time. More time to sleep. That's it. <laughs> caffeine is another one. So stimulants, when, you, when you're drinking a bunch of caffeine, if you're drinking three or four cups of coffee a day, and then maybe you're having tea, maybe you're throwing a soda in there, what's happening is that you're spiking your nervous system, okay? and as you spike your nervous system up, it makes you more alert, and then you crash. It makes you more alert, then you crash. What's that doing to your cortisol levels? It goes up, up, up. So if you're able to eliminate caffeine, don't shoot the messenger, it is what it is, number one, you go half and half. Whatever you're doing now, if it's six cups of coffee, Cut it down to three. Do the other three at least decaf. If you're doing two cups of coffee, do one cup of coffee and then do one cup of green tea. Do it as delayed gratification. As you do this consistently over time, you'll be able to retrain your body, retrain your habits into doing the right things right. So caffeine is a big one. If you're drinking a ton of caffeine, 
option number one is you got to get off of it right away. Number two is do not go to the sugar-free in a diet stuff, these sugar substitutes. A lot of times, how many of you know a friend or family member, family member who drinks diet soda all the time and they're doing it because they want to lose weight? What's happening is that they're not losing weight, are they? It's cool. What's it do? It's a neurotoxin in your body. When you drink soda, it, it completely dehydrates you. When it dehydrates you, obviously when you're not hydrated, it decreases your, um, your GI tract. It pretty much takes all the water out of your GI tract. If you drink a lot of soda, a lot of diet stuff, it makes you constipated because you're unable to flush all the stuff out. So I, <laughs> I have to say, something like this is just going to really irritate some people. So, <laughs> so here it is. I, I want to give you guys some new info some, on why you have to eliminate these things out of your diet. And I wanted to show kind of the ones that, if you can just get rid of these ones, and I'll show you all the things you can add in, which is on a slide or two. But these are the things you've got to take away. So the pork. Same thing, don't shoot the messenger. It has a four hour digestion from tip to tip. Okay. Humans have 12 to 24, dig 20, 12 to 24 hour digestion from tip to tip. Now what happens with toxins? When you get rid of that food that quickly, within four hours, guess what happens? Those toxins that, were, that the pig is eating, they're not going where they need to go. So what's bacon? Is it muscle or fat? Okay. Toxins are water solu soluble, meaning they absorb in water, or are they fat soluble? Say fat. <laughs> so if we're eating bacon, are we eating water or fat? <coughs> are we eating the toxins or the health of the pig? Toxins. Oh, my job is done. <laughs> Shellfish. What's the vein in the shrimp? Oh. <laughs> Exactly what it is. It's excrement for the PC today. If it's shellfish, stay. Their bottom feeders, stay away from them. Sugar substitutes. I touched on it. The buzzwords for sugar substitute: diet or sugar-free. That's how you know it's a sugar substitute. And if you go to the restaurant, all the packets in the middle of the table. If it's not the white sugar packet. That's the one you go for. Out of the other ones, okay, stay off the other ones. They just do a very, very limited amount, or if they, you can ask them if they have raw honey in the back. Sometimes they have honey for the restaurants you're in, uh, because a lot of times they cook with it, various types of recipes. You can get a side of that as well and throw that in your coffee or in your tea. Hydrogenated oils, all your fried foods, your baking goods. What they do, so it lasts, is they threw extra hydrogen, an atom of hydrogen in it to increase the shelf life. So that's hydro hydrogenated oils. Additives or calories are easy. Uh, Mountain Dew. I used to have an assistant that worked for me years ago, and she was drinking like six Mountain Dews a day. And she's like, and she, she was so, so sick. She had a lot of stuff going on. And I said, what, what, why are you sick? She said, I don't know. She goes, I just drink water Mountain Dew. But if you look at the back of the label, and then she quit. She never drank Mountain Dew after that. After we had a little talk. Because of all the additives, we understand that drinks are not yellow. There's no blue Gatorade. We all agree that there's stuff that makes it blue, purple, gray, Gatorade, red. What are we giving our kids to go play sports with? Or Powerade, right? So are, when we give them these types of things, are we making them healthier or sick? Sick. If we love our kids, why are we doing this? Because the athletes, you think, when they're on the sidelines of the NFL, you see the big Gatorade jugs? I got a newsflash. Guess what's not in there? Gatorade. It's water. It's water. Okay, because those athletes, they take, you want to talk about guys who are, and girls who are serious about their health, they're not putting 24 grams of sugar into them per, per a cup, two cups. Okay, they're not, they're, they're, it's amazing what they can do, what their bodies are doing. They're not going to go put all that sugar in them. So it's just marketing. They have the, Gatorade has the kind of money to market it to unfortunate little kids. Cold cuts. Don't shoot the messenger again. It's easy, it's fast. When you take off a cold cut, has anyone ever noticed that there's a, a little layer of something on there? Slime. <laughs> right, what is that slime? Anyone know? I just knew that it was like grease and stuff from the cold cuts. Yeah. It's a viral spray that they put on it to try to kill all the bacteria that grows. What? It's a viral spray they throw on it. So whenever you're doing the cold cuts, 
and there's sulfites and additives that are in it. So if you're doing cold cuts, at the very least, it's got to be organic, and then you got to get the ones that are preservative or sulfate-free as well, so it's going to eliminate that type of stuff. You want your food to go bad. Yeah. You, you don't want your food lasting until the next uh, apocalypse is coming. Okay. You can buy other stuff to store for that, pending that you know brimstone and stuff come down the road. But for the time being, you do not want everything in your house to not go bad until 2024. It's not good. Okay. You're going to spend that money. You're going to spend it on being healthy now, not on being sick later. Dairy's the next one, Pat. Why? Why dairy? Because when you pasteurize dairy. What it does, when you go through pasteurization, it heats it, they heat it up really quickly to get rid of all the bacteria and pus that go into milk and cow's milk. Then they freeze it really quickly as well. What it does is it denatures that protein, so it takes out all the good stuff that's in it. That's what denatured protein is. So when you do that, so what was in the smoothie tonight was coconut, or was almond milk. You can use uh, coconut milk as well. You can buy it in the cans if you're able to do that over the cartons because it has less um, preservatives and additives that are in it. So you can buy the can stuff over the carton stuff. Mm. Caffeine we touched on, refined sugar, same thing. Don't, white flour, if you have an ant problem this summer, you can use white flour because of the bleach that's in it. And they'll go towards it and that, that will kill them. Or you can use the Splenda that you're no longer using, you can use, throw that on your deck as well, and that will take care of the ants instead of the raid. You can throw a flower and the splendor. Oh my God, down. I'm sure I'm doing that for my husband. Sprinkle it all around, you'll be in business. Okay. And then table salt, switch to sea salt. Lastly, last one's on soy protein. What is the matter with soy protein? Does anyone know? Genetically modified. The GMO, which is one, which is a big one. So it's genetically modified, meaning it's not it's not made by God, natural. right? Not naturally made. <clears throat> so that makes it man-made. Anything that man makes. So if I put a Twinkie, all right, I, I'm in my I'm at the farm and I dig a hole and I, and I throw a Twinkie there and I throw the soil back on it and I fertilize it. What's going to happen? Nothing. <laughs> the Twinkies, I guess, it's probably not going to go anywhere. It's hard. It's just, there's so much crap that's in it. But now, it's, but if you throw seeds and nuts and things like that, and you throw that and you water that type of stuff that's God made, then those are the types of foods you want to eat. If you're eating a ton of man-made processed stuff, it's a major issue. So I got good news for you. I, there, there's a 90-10 rule that you can take. On average, if you're eating three to four meals a day, you got seven days in a week last time I looked, seven times four, 28 meals. Guess what? I'm going to give you permission to cheat on 10% of those meals. So you take 10% of that, and it could be party time for two to four meals a week. You can do what you want. But you see how you can kind of stack it up. If you're doing 28 the right way, and, or 24 the right way, and four <coughs> the wrong way, it's a heck of a lot better than doing 14 and 14, or 20 and eight. So if you can do the 90-10 rule, and you give yourself permission on those two or three meals a week, do what you want. Have at it. As you get going with this, you're going to realize that you're not going to want to do it as often because of the way that it makes you feel. As you start changing your, changing what you're eating, what you're putting in your body, if you start to cheat often, you're going to start feeling crap. Okay? You just, some of you have just been doing it for so long that you just that you think feeling like the way you feel is normal. But once you start to change, you'll be able to bounce back and really start to feel healthy from this. Okay? The advanced plan. So this 21-day weight loss. Um, what you have in your handouts, show me kind of this packet for you. There's the 21 day wait. I have one there for you, but I think you gave it to somebody. You did? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the advanced plan, there's two types of plans, but with this, for this weight loss challenge, what we're doing over the next, this packet here, you can open this up and this gives you recommendations over the next 21 days. So if you're trying to get, get a kickstart, all this is doing, by the way, all this is doing is just keep getting your body, get, getting your mind right, and seeing if you can make a change for three weeks and stay focused for three weeks. My wife and I, over the month of January, we like to drink wine. We said for the month of January that we're not gonna drink any wine. We like to drink a wine, we have a glass of wine on weekends, so we're not doing it for a month. Same thing as one state. One that we could do is one that we just didn't want to say, no, let's just not drink wine for the month of January. 
what this does is now you're doing a smoothie for breakfast and lunch, and then you're doing an advanced plan dinner. So it keeps it pretty simple. You can change your smoothie recipes up. Most of you who are active patients in your cruise ship book, there's a bunch of nutrition recipes. In the green book that's up there, there's a bunch of recipes as well that are advanced plan approved. And if you're going down this route, this is over the next three weeks, this is what you're doing. If you need coaching throughout this, just let me know and I'll be your accountability partner if you don't have anybody to hold yourself accountable. Once you do this consistently, then after 21 days, then you're going to continue to do all this other stuff that we're talking about. If this isn't you, where you're like, you know what, I just need to make some changes, then you don't have to do this, but then you're just going to follow the information that's on you. So the advanced plan, what we're doing for the advanced plan, we're cutting out the sugar because of all the inflammatory processes that come with sugar. That's going to also drop down your cortisol levels as well. You're going to decrease your fruit. Okay? The only time you're going to eat fruit, if you're going to eat fruit at all, it's going to be the first thing in the morning. There's going to be some contradictions on, on here because, once again, this is just for general info. It's over the next three days. You're eating fruit and blueberries for the next three weeks. Okay. Thank you. Let's go. This is over the next three weeks. Now, while we're doing, while we're decreasing fruit, you want to have your heaviest meal. You want to do it first thing in the morning or last thing at night. What do you think? First thing morning. morning. Makes sense, right? That's when you want to take in your carbohydrates. If you're taking carbohydrates about an hour or two before you go to bed, what that's doing is you're trying to metabolize that while you're sleeping. It's not working. So if you're going to eat a little later, at least make it a healthy fat. Because when, it talks, when we talk about macronutrients, and we have a couple macronutrients in our body, such as fat, protein, and carbohydrates, <coughs> macronutrients all have energy with them. When you take in carbohydrates, it's about 9 calories per gram. I'm sorry, it, carbohydrates is 4 calories per gram. When you take in fat, it's 9, so it's doubling that up. So if you're taking in that healthy fat, you're going to burn it faster than you would carbohydrate. Now, what else we're doing here with fruit? It can't just be any of the fruit. It's anything in the berry family, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, granny smith apples, and grapefruit. That's going to be your fruit list. If you're doing a bunch of cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelons, it's all sugar-based, and it's going to be more inflammatory. It's better than doing that than the, you know, going through the drive-through of KFC, but we're just trying to do the right things right here. So that's why we're decreasing the fruit there on this advanced plan. Trans fats we touched on, alcohol and caffeine, and then your conven conventional meats. First and foremost, when you're going organic, it's got to be your protein, grass-fed beef, uh, antibiotic-free chicken, as well as wild fish. It has to be organic, no non-negotiables on the 90-10 roll, you're eating out, you're going out, whatever you're doing, and that's what you're doing on a 10%. But 90% of the time, because what is in the uh, conventional proteins, it's all the growth hormones and antibiotics. Those are toxins, it's toxicity, it's fat soluble. When you're toxic, your cells don't detox, you can't lose weight. That's the, that is the, that's the process behind it, why we do it. It's not just because we want you to, to spend more money on the protein. We've got to get all these toxins that we're getting inundated with out of our lifestyle. Next, eating healthy fats and foods. So healthy fats, avocado, nuts and seeds, almond butter, things like that, coconut-based products. These are all healthy-based fats. You will burn through those fats. I'll catch you. How about it? That's Perfect. Good. Anything with the exception, so no peanut butter because of the toxicity that comes with peanuts. So any of the nuts you want to have, you can have, just stay off of peanuts. Okay. Uh, mushrooms are very good for this coconut we touched on. Good. Questions on this stuff so far? Can we get a list of those? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. Um, Jill's going to throw this on YouTube, so this video will be on YouTube. And then there is the advanced plan. Um, we have an advanced plan uh, diet that has all the foods listed out there as well. Okay. I have a question. In the fruits, why only berries, grapefruit, and lemons? Why not other fruits? Because of sugar. Because of sugar content that's in other fruits, such as like grapes and mangoes, things like that. But magnesium is also needed for the body. Say again? Magnesium? Yeah, so you can get it in other, you can get it elsewhere. You can get it through your greens as well, outside of just there, nuts and seeds. So there's other places you get magnesium besides just there. So I, if, you're get, if you're pulling your magnesium strictly from those places, that's not a place I'd want you to pull it from consistently. And then your protein. 
Same thing, you wanna have a protein with each meal, you gotta be careful of how much you're taking in. So at the bottom is gonna be your uh, macronutrients. For women, it's 15 grams per meal. For men, it's 20 grams per meal. If you're exercising, you're gonna, you're gonna add five grams to that right after you exercise. You always want, if you're working out and you're trying to become more lean, you wanna eat protein right after you exercise because that's your primary builder for muscle. So it's 15 grams for women, 20 grams for men. If you take in too much, okay, so I used to uh, work with, I used to have a bunch of bodybuilders as patients, and they would you know, protein, protein, protein. What it does, it kills the kidneys. It's really hard to digest, and it, really, and it can really cause some issues within your urine as well, and it overloads your kidneys. So you want to be careful with how much protein you're taking in, and the more, more, more amount you take in, it gets processed into fat. Same thing as if you take in too much sugar, it breaks down into fat. Same thing with protein, it breaks it down into fat as well. Okay. When we talk about metabolism, this is the other thing I wanted to bring up tonight, because I want you guys to spike up your metabolism. So here's eight ways how you can boost it without doing anything outside of leaving your own house, which is pretty cool. So the first one, eating breakfast. Now, those of you who are doing intermittent fasting, this doesn't apply to you, which is something we'll get into here in a second. So if you're not doing intermittent fasting, your breakfast, you want this to be your largest meal of the day. Okay. It's also going to be, you're going to have your carbohydrates at this point as well. Small snacks throughout the day. This keeps your blood sugar stable when you're eating throughout the day. What happens if you don't eat until lunch, and then you go out and eat because you're so hungry, you eat a ton of food, what happens when you eat about a half an hour to 45 minutes later? Your blood sugar levels go in the day. So if you're eating, even if you're able to throw a handful of nuts, if you're able to eat an apple or something throughout the morning, and you do that just to allow your body to start to digest food. Consume protein with each meal we touch on, green veggies. What that's going to do is it's going to also allow your body to break down. You burn calories by breaking down fiber, which is what that does. That's why you want to do that. So if you're trying to spike up your metabolism, you can do that. The water intake. So the rule of thumb, it's half your body weight in ounces every day. Or a half a gallon if you want to keep it simple. So half, if your body weight is 160 pounds, you're doing 80 ounces of water per day. If you're 140 pounds, you can do the math. That's your pretty much standard equation for this. If you're getting back pain, neck pain, headaches, you're breaking out, your skin's breaking out, you're dehydrated, you've got to get these toxins out of your body. If you're constipated, you're not going to the bathroom, how many times should you go to the bathroom each day? Or after every time you eat, Think about that. How many of you are going three or four times a day? Probably not many. Some may. If you're going once every one or two days, it's an issue. You gotta get some water in your system. That is not normal to go once every two or three days. You should be going daily, minimum, but at most, you gotta be going after every single meal. So what recommendations, what you should be doing. Cardio two to three times a week. Correcting your forward head posture. Everybody put your chin into your chest, take a deep breath in, and relax. Now everybody put your head back, shoulders back, deep breath in. What was easier? Don't. Sit straight out. Sit back, right? How many of you does this look like throughout the day? How many of you are driving all day at work? How many of you are maybe taking care of the kiddos, you're bent over all day? What happens with forward head posture? You have a gland in your middle of your neck, it's called your thyroid gland. It is your weight loss center. If you have nerve interference, it's going to your thyroid gland, it is impossible to lose weight. What, you, what needs to happen, you need to remove interference off that portion of your neck. That's what forward head posture is. When you have forward head posture over time, now you incorporate the shoulders, now you've got upper back issues. The problem with that type of posture, you now become, you have a posture, it's called kyphosis. I always use my dad as an example because this is him. He walks with a cane, he's overweight, never took care of himself. And he has kyphosis and forward head posture. He is very obese, a bunch of medications, he has cardiovascular disease. Why does he have cardiovascular disease? Outside of not, not taking care of himself. Anybody else know? So that nerve in your heart, guess where it starts from? Your upper back. The nerve from your heart doesn't start in your lower back. 
So when you're at CHI 5, there's a 90% correlation as you get older with correlation with cardiovascular disease. So if you're weight loss resistant and or you have cardiovascular disease issues within your family, you've got to fix your neck and your upper back. It's not just back pain and neck pain anymore. It's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about life-changing stuff here. If you're able to get that corrected over time, what are you doing? You increase your decrease your resistance to that thyroid gland. Now you're that weight loss resistance goes away, you're able to lose weight, you're getting pressure to your vascular system, now your body's living optimally healthy. You will not hear that at your primary care doctors when you're up for your physical. You're not gonna hear that from your gynecologist when you go to your checkup. They're not trained in it, it's not what they study. They wait for that disease process to take place. Oh, I know what this is. You have hypothyroidism. Here's your centroid, take it for the rest of your life. Well, I know what this is. You got high blood pressure, probably got some cardiovascular disease in here, you need to go on a stat. Take that for the rest of your life. Because that's what they're studying. They're, setting, they're studying the end result, not how you can get to the cause. You get to the cause, you address the cause, you fix the cause, <clears throat> now we're talking. That smoothie that you had, that was the ingredients that were in it. Coconut oil, there's a couple of different ways you can buy it. It can be unrefined or refined coconut oil. You want it to be unrefined because it goes through less of it less of a chemical process to want to be an unrefined product. Organic kale is a green, or you can use spinach as well. Hemp seeds or chia seeds are very, very good for antioxidants. Then the grass-fed, or you can use, for those of you who are vegetarians, you can use a plant-based protein. One scoop of max greens. So if you're not getting all your veggies in, you can get your greens that are already broken down to a powder form, throw them in a shake or throw them in water and drink it. Blueberries, and you can add water as well. If you're looking for other snack options to eat throughout the day, we touched on nuts and seeds, fruits in the morning. I love to do veggies mid-morning, mid-afternoon as a snack. You can use a, a healthy hummus, you can use an almond butter, you can use that for a spread. More processed stuff here, you can get an organic food bar, a little more on the processed stuff. Same thing with the protein powder, a little more processed that way as well. Can we still do the green apples? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going for it. But do it in the morning. So then the key, where, where this all ties in, so subluxation kills, plain and simple. When your body is subluxated over time from poor posture, from strenuous work conditions, poor sleeping habits, the traumas you sustain throughout your life, subluxation doesn't just come from physical stress, it comes from chemical stresses as well. Has anybody seen the movie Super Size Me? Those of you who get Netflix, you can watch it. It's, um, you can put it in your search engine. You, uh, probably on YouTube, I know. It's been out for a while. And what the guy did, and the, to kind of coincide with this, is he ate McDonald's. He had to eat McDonald's every single meal for a month. He was a healthy guy going into it. And about three weeks into it, I believe, uh, he was under the uh, care of a doctor. And they said, look, you got your blood sugar's through the roof. We're scared for you. We want you to stop this right away. That was over a three-week period. And that's what, but it's a great movie, but it ties in how chemical stresses from the food that you can eat break down and produce the physical manifestation within the body. When that breaks down as well, it can cause your body to break down. Now you have nervous system impairment. When you have nervous system impairment, what's your nervous system control? Everything. Pick your condition. GI issues, pancreatitis, diabetes, <coughs> You pick it, that's what's stemming <clears throat> from it. So if you're able to control, control the nervous system through positive stress management, decreasing your stress, improving your range of motion, getting adjusted, eating the right way, exercising the right way, you stack that up, that's where health comes from. Subluxation is the opposite. And that's why, the only way you know if you had this, like you have to get an x-ray. It's the only way you're gonna know if you're subluxated. It's not gonna show up, it's not gonna show up on a range of motion test, it's not going to show up in a physical, it's not going to show up on blood work. <coughs> the last connection is this, and it comes back to the mindset piece. When you're going through this process, and you're going through this change, and now you're in the season of change, and you ask yourself, you know, you're at the, you're at the neighbor's house on Friday night, okay, and they're having a party, or you're at a birthday party, 
And now you have the urge, because that's there. Because money, during the work day, the urge, or you're taking care of the kids, the urge really isn't there. Okay, but now you're put in a situation, everybody, it's party time, right? Everybody else is around, he's having a good time. Now you've got that urge to cheat. It happens. It's okay to have that urge, it's normal. Now you gotta ask yourself these three questions. Number one, you ask yourself, am I eating out of necessity or because of, I'm having some emotional stuff going on right now? If the answer is yes, stop what you're doing. You're doing it for the wrong reasons. Number two, am I treating my body right by putting this food or drink in me? If you say yes, go ahead and do it. If it's no, you've got a major problem, don't do it. And lastly, is what, I'm help, is what I'm eating helping me reach my goals? The goals you're setting forth and trying to change, is that what you're doing? Is that what it's doing? Or is it you're doing, are you doing self-sabotage? If you're doing a self-sabotage, it doesn't matter what I just said tonight, you gotta take accountability for it. But if you can ask yourself those three things and change and make that mindset shift, so you know what, I'm not gonna do it because I've done it before. I know how this book ends. I've written this chapter before. I'm changing the chapter tonight. Okay, you have the 90-10 rule. How many meals per week can you do this? Remember, it's the 10% out of all meals you're eating. And then lastly, what season are you in? You have the ability to change. Everybody take something away from tonight. My job is done. God bless. Have a great night. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them at me. I'll be sticking around.